Hello, my name is Olga Peters. I'm your host for this edition of Meet the Candidates on BCTV. I'd like to welcome my next guest. His name is Rick Morton. He is running for state treasurer on the Republican ticket. And he has may look familiar to some folks in the audience because he is a local resident and has worked for many years in the community. Welcome, Rick. I'm so glad you can be here glad today. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. So you have run for state office once before. You ran to represent West Brattleboro uh, in the House. What made you decide to get back in the race now? Uh, the time was right, and the opportunity was there. It was kind of a wide-open situation, and I said, I'll, I'll do it. Simple as that. <laughs> and why state treasurer? Uh, well, again, that was the position that was available. I have background in banking. I have background in being treasurer of a variety of different profit, nonprofit organizations. And so with that background, it, kind of, it seemed like a natural fit. What are um, some other skills that you feel are important to the role of state treasurer besides the financial background? Well, it's a big uh, it's a big operation in the state. I mean, all the fiscal matters run through that department. Um, and so it's you've, you've got a large staff and these are people who are professionals. So in a way, the treasurer is not actually, you know, with the eye shades and a pen and pencil necessarily, but it's kind of a management role, a leadership role, organizational role, and uh, setting some priorities and so forth within the department and then following through on the governor's um, budget plans. Uh, so it, it seems like uh, uh, a, a, a natural fit from my background and, and I was willing to, to tackle it. You mentioned you have a background in banking and you've mm -hmm. served as treasurer on a number of boards. Um, what other back, uh, experience do you have in the community? Well, um, not related to fiscal matters necessarily, but mm -hmm. I've been involved with uh, uh, the assessment teams for um, the Red, uh, for for um, United Way. I was searching for that uh, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I've been involved with Big Brothers Big Sisters a while ago for a number of years as a big brother for a, a young student in one of the schools, um, and. Uh, there's a number of other uh, sort of private organizations like uh, uh, Branches Pregnancy Center, formerly known as CareNet. Um, I was the treasurer on that forever. Um, and a number of other smaller organizations as well. You mentioned priorities, being able to prioritize as the treasurer. Mm -hmm. What are, if, if you were elected, what are the like top three priorities you'd like to bring to the position or, or t I should say to the state's fiscal Situation. Well, it would be a new position for me, so mm -hmm. I don't have that uh, the background of, of actually hands-on. So I, one of my first priorities is just get a lay of the land, um, talk to the key people there. Um, now the department is, uh, is, is, is supposed to be nonpartisan, but on the other hand, you're also going to have people who are appointed there who are doing professional work who've represented one party or the other or are friends with or know, knowledgeable by one party or the other. And not that that's a big deal, mm -hmm. but I just like to know where people are coming from, know their background, their experience. So I'd really spend some time getting to know the people and understanding the processes a little bit um, better uh, and have them really share with me what their, what their uh, insight is. Uh, really kind of like making their own suggestions is for one thing. Mm -hmm. So that would be just getting the lay of the land to be one of the priorities. And then also we need to connect with the uh, governor and his office as to what's happening with um, uh, the, the budget process that he's going to be going through, or she in this case, but it's going to be um, either or. And so for that reason, there would be a, a need to be uh, really in close communication with the governor and his people and his office. And so those are the t top two things. And then internal organization or possibly reorganization. I would be interested in looking at um, the way the department is set up and look for possible low-hanging fruit for reorganization. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be some things that seem obvious and we just got around to it. So we'll take a look at that. Some fresh, sometimes fresh eyes coming in to a new office can just spot some things that actually when you come right down to it, they could all say, oh yeah, 
why, why didn't we do that before? Mm -hmm. um, it's just a gimme. And it wouldn't be a partisan thing, it'd just be like reasonable. Right. So we look for that kind of thing and then work our way into a, a more thorough or, uh, possible critique of the way the department's set up. Not critique in the sense of being negative, but just oversight um, and just trying to be efficient and effective. What do you see right now as the overall financial strength or economic strength of, of Vermont and where do you see the challenges? Um, quite frankly, I see that we have more challenges uh, at this time. Um, I think most citizens realize that we're an aging state. Uh, if they haven't been told that, then it's really true that a lot of our young people are leaving the state because they seem to think that opportunities are elsewhere, that employers are not flocking to Vermont. Um, some come, and maybe large and small, but, but mostly it's just working around the edges. So one of the big challenges we have in our state is to kind of reverse the, the brain drain and the, and the, and the yeah, and the, and the financial losses from that. Um, so I guess one of the things that I would be most concerned about is finding out um, what the best resources we have are mm -hmm. and emphasizing those and working on that foundation trying to build a more positive outcome. Because we've had um, a lot of push for tax increases and revenue increases, and a lot of times that will come from uh, fees that mm -hmm. we charge for various things, services of government, local and statewide and so forth. And we keep, they keep bumping up mm -hmm. uh, commercial fees for banks and institutions uh, and in local businesses, large and small and they just keep continually getting told you're going to have to pay more, you're going to have to pay more. Well, okay, maybe to a certain extent that's necessary, um, but we need to try to minimize that by being very careful about what we're, why we're asking for the increase. Now that why is a government and a, is a governor and a legislative issue. Mm -hmm. The how we go about it and the mechanics of that would be a more of a treasurer kind of role. Of how do we make it happen? What's the... Um, What's the, the methodology we'll use to accomplish it? Are there anything happening in the treasurer's office now that you would like to see done differently? Not that I'm aware of. Now, the current treasurer is Beth Pierce. Yes. Where are the two of you similar and where are you different? Um, just at a high 30,000 foot level, we both have a financial interest. And we've sort of gravitated to that world um, but I've never met Beth, and uh, so I wouldn't really be in a position to critique her or her role. Um, the state is functioning, so it's not like we've got a crisis. Um, therefore, um, i probably leave it at that. Why should people vote for you? Well, um, I think one of the main reasons, actually, uh, for people to vote for me would be to consider how government is functioning effectively and efficiently. If we have a Republican governor again, Phil Scott, um, I think it would be a more effective team to have someone from his neck of the woods, so to speak, politically mm -hmm. um, in those various roles. We don't have that right now. I think we can function with a split kind of government that way. I think that's okay. But I think we should give it a try uh, to have a more unified approach uh, from top to bottom. I'd, I'd just as soon people give it a try and vote Republican right up and down the ticket this, whole, this time and just give, it a, give us a chance to show the state and show the people of the state what we can do. We, what, um, that's a great response. Thank you. It's, um, I'm just working to form my next question. So, you know, when you talk about having a unified government unified ticket mm -hmm. are you what do you see are there philosophical differences that you you see i mean like why would that make a difference i guess is, yeah. is probably my question well why do we have two parties or why don't we have uh, five parties or eight parties like some other parts of the world mm -hmm. um, in other places in the world they have people with different pri uh, priorities and interests and concerns 
and they tend to coalesce around certain people and result in a party. And once you've got a party, it tends to keep going forward. Well, in our system, we've sort of we've gone through an early stage. We had Whigs, and and now we've got Democrats and Republicans. Um, so is there a philosophical difference? I think there definitely is a philosophical mm -hmm. difference. And that's one of the reasons why I got into a political world in the first place is because I didn't, I didn't think that in a state which is considered blue, which is essentially democratic, that uh, we were actually going in a, in a healthy direction. I think we needed to uh, emphasize, uh, and sometimes this is considered uh, perhaps to be a negative statement, but not really, but a limited role of government. Mm -hmm. um, I guess by way of analogy, if I was to ask people how thrilled they were with their interactions with government, and you can always pick on certain um, departments, and I don't mean to try to in imply you know, in terrible function, but do you really enjoy going to motor vehicles? Mm -hmm. Do you really enjoy going to all the different other places you have to go to get permits and so forth? Um, is that really a good process? Um, the more that government gets involved in the lives of individuals, the more of that will be needed. Uh, and there is a certain level that it has to be there, the, the infrastructure and so forth. And there's certain protections that need to be in place. But the, the philosophy of a Republican generally or a conservative, which I consider myself to be, is that the best role of government is to do what they need to do, but do it as inobtrusively as possible and inexpensively as possible and leave the, have the smallest footprint possible in the community and in the state and still get the job done. Mm -hmm. um, we can debate about what the job is that needs to be done. Um, and I believe that uh, in the Democratic Party, I, you know, I can't really speak for them, but I can tell you what I observe, is they're always pushing to do more, 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 uh, expand, 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 expand. They look to government to solve I'm probably staying in an overbroad way, look to government to solve all the problems. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think that that's the best approach to solving problems in the local community. We have lots of organizations which can address those things and, and nonprofits and others as well. Um, that's a different discussion, but I think uh, philosophically speaking that um, we can only push that envelope so far. And then we get to the point where uh, we're becoming inefficient, over-developed uh, as an institution, um, as a government, too weighty, too expensive. And here's the thing. If you hire, um, if you hire a new officer to mm -hmm. conduct a new role, you're going to have to get that officer a place to work. You're going to have to ensure that place. You're going to have to guard that place. You're going to have to furnish that place. You're going to have to maybe get a secretary. You're going to have to get an attorney to, to advise. So if you hire one person for a particular, this is just theoretically, mm -hmm. you're winding up expanding a bureaucracy. Uh, do we really want that for all, every little issue that we're facing in our, in our culture? Um, some of the, some of the um, issues that we face um, are, are small businesses. I want to encourage people to be entrepreneurs. That's where we get new employment, that's where we get new services, and that's where we get really strong vitality in our community. Um, however, if they have to go through a very rigorous uh, regulatory process to get their certificate or approval or whatever permit, um, first off, that's somebody telling them they can or cannot do it. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it's a big delay and a big expense. And thirdly, I think that sometimes the permitting process um, has become a way of people who are already in the industry of sort of screening out other competitors who might get hmm. into the industry. Uh, and they, so they set the rules high because, well, they're already in, so it's good for them. Mm -hmm. And they set the bar high for the new person that wants to come in. Oh, you need to be trained for this. You need to be trained for that. You need to have this so many hours experience. And that's just one area of where government sometimes, I think, will overreach. And I don't think it's necessary, and I think we need to rethink some of that. Now, as treasurer, that's not my role. It would be the legislature's role to look at that, and the governor in, in collaboration with the legislature to look at that. But I, th I think philosophically speaking, a Republican wants to see an efficient, effective, slim and trim government. 
small footprint. If you were elected treasurer, would you feel comfortable going to the legislature and saying, like say there's a new bill that's going to be passed, mm -hmm. going through that and saying, here's where we can be slim and trim mm -hmm. um, from a fiscal standpoint. Uh, is, are those co conversations you'd be comfortable having? I, I, have, I would have no problem with those conversations. Uh, there's a, depending on the circumstance, that might not be the most appropriate thing for a treasurer to do, but um, certainly uh, interactions with the governor uh, that would be a place to uh, sort of give him a, 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 some advice and maybe he can make a policy proposal based on the advice from the treasurer's department from that role um, and then he can decide if he wants to make that a priority follow through on it and then it becomes his baby it becomes his issue and if he's got buy-in then he can push that that becomes part of his agenda and he looks like the uh, he looks like the winner <laughs> and I don't mind being in the background doing my role and if I can find some things along the lines of fiscal savings and reorganization that'll be like that I'm fine I don't have to my name have my name out there now of course there's always the chance that in Vermont we would end up and we do we have a, a Republican governor a progressive lieutenant governor we have a demo mostly Democratic Senate and House um, so there's a chance that you could end up being of a different party than the other folks you're working with. Mm -hmm. How, what is your approach to working in a team? Well, um, my whole background in the work world, mostly banking, but other realms as well, um, has been with people I had no idea what their, um, I mean, I could have guessed perhaps, but I had mm -hmm. no idea what their political orientation was. We didn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been a part of a team. We have goals, mutual goals. We discuss our different points of view and we get along. We uh, get the job done. And we were successful. I think we were effective. And I think that's certainly possible even in a political realm where you do know the other person's point of view. You've got a job to do. You've got a, a role to play and you're not the, the boss. You're a contributor to mm -hmm. the whole process. So work together. Uh, I'm a uh, conservative first and a Republican second, so I wouldn't be partisan that way. I mean, I have a point of view, but I'm willing to be persuaded there are certain things that perhaps need to be expanded um, by, uh, in the role of government. Mm -hmm. Shock, shock, a Republican said that. Well, I want that to be limited. I want that to be carefully thought out, mm -hmm. but it's certainly possible. Um, and, and as the nature of our culture changes, technology changes, and the, and, and the society where we live in, in our state, uh, changes, yeah, that'll happen. So I'm willing to have that conversation. I think I've worked well with people. Um, that's like in a job interview. I like people. <laughs> <laughs> How trite is that? <laughs> well, but that's a good question. I mean, do you like people? Do you like working in groups? Yes, I've been that all my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing, you know, because you never, you never know who you're going to be working with when when you're in when you're in government. Um, what are do you have any um, like lines in the sand that even if you were trying to hammer out a compromise, you're not willing to to cross? Well, if I had a policy, well, I suppose there are certain policies that um, are the jurisdiction of the treasurer. They're not the main ones that most people would know. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really can't address that from within the department. I've not been in the department. Uh, integrity. But these are like human issues, not political issues. Personal integrity, uh, competence, um, dereliction of duty. I mean, we have to make these judgments all the time. We don't want to make them. We try to put them off. We try to work with people to get them to a place where they can do their job well. But job performance is important. And so if there's a person who's not performing their task and they need to be let go or reassigned or trained, let's go there um, and let's have that conversation. Um, as far as other policy matters, I think really that is the governor's role and the legislature's role. They work it out. They duke it out. And um, just addressing your comment earlier about how we have kind of divided government now, I think we're 
not in a good place. Mm. I would like to see a unified uh, state for a season and let people see how that works. And if, the, if they think, you know, this is actually better this way. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't tried that in quite some time. Um, so I guess that would be my response. Do you think unification when it comes to government happens only through through party or do you think there are other ways that unification can happen? Well, it's, it's not unification and it's not even unif... I just think um, that the philosophy of the of the people who are selected to uh, lead, mm -hmm. uh, they pretty much need to be on the same team. If you, uh, you can use a sports analogy and make it too, um, too much of a, uh, of a, it's not always a good analogy. <laughs> but, um, Especially with me, because I really uh, don't know sports. <laughs> that's okay. Just imagine you're on any kind of a team, um, mm -hmm. and you just need to have the same, uh, when I say same, I don't mean identical, I mean a similar uh, framework for getting the job done. Um, because otherwise you might have competing ideas and can you get along and can you be functioning and can you get the job done? Yes, you can, I'm, because it's been happening. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's more effective and more efficient and better for the taxpayers and the citizens um, if they can have um, an executive branch, for instance, that is uh, on the same page. There are some big financial issues that Vermont's been dealing with uh, for many years now. We have, you know, how, and they're the questions that always seem to come up. How are we going to pay for education? How are we going to pay for health care? How are we going to um, make sure people's wages and their cost of living are a little bit more in alignment? Any, I, I would love to hear if you have any thoughts on how, even if it wasn't the treasurer's role, just because you do have this strong financial background, what do you see as a state that we could be doing differently to um, shore up our financial health overall? Well, if we want our, our citizens to remain here and to thrive here, we need to make sure that they have the ability to uh, sustain their life, uh, sustain their way of living. Every time taxes are raised, fees are raised, permits, fees are raised, and all those things and um, are raised, uh, uh, always supposed to be for a good reason. It's always mm -hmm. a good cause. Um, and yet it just makes that much harder for all the citizens. And sometimes it's a targeted group of citizens to thrive. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we want that thriving to take place and we need a vibrant economic community, then I need to be, we need to be very careful about what we do with payroll taxes and what we do with just overall taxes and sales tax. And I joke with people that I, uh, um, I live in Vermont because I wanted to be in a state that had payroll tax, income tax, and, you know, I mean, uh, sales tax, income tax, and property tax. <laughs> Could have been in the other state next door if I wanted a little more limited approach. But no, we chose Vermont, and I ha we don't regret the choice. Mm -hmm. But that means all three of those areas, income, property, and, uh, and sales tax, uh, can, can put a squeeze on our people. I think that's one of the biggest issues. Um, and government needs to tread lightly, and that's why a small footprint is important. Um, because if we can trim back this particular office and not hire that particular person um, or maybe reorganize things so it's done more efficiently, use our technology, leverage our technology, that will be, I think, a stronger uh, state and a stronger thriving community and environment here and economy here. That's just a philosophical observation. Mm -hmm. The treasurer can't really affect that directly. Um, but that's what I would see as a, as a big issue for the citizens to consider when they choose their party. Vote Republican. <laughs> well, um, Rick, thank you. We're just about out of time, but is there anything you wanted to add or wish I had asked? No, you've done a really good job. Uh, I'm sure there might be some folks who are watching who are maybe yelling at the screen saying, why didn't you ask this or whatever. But. Um, I can't think of any that you've missed. You've done a good job. Well, thank you. Now, if people have questions for you, or if they want to learn more about you, do you have a website, Facebook page? 
Um, the best way is just give me a call at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's the best way. I'm a local guy, so that's for people in this area. Mm -hmm. But, you know, all you need to be able to do is dial 802 and you can find my find my number. Um, so you're in the phone book? I am. In the, in the old-fashioned phone book? Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, Rick Morton, thank you for being on Meet the Candidates today. You're very welcome. I've been delighted to be here. Mm -hmm.